Well, Christmas is on its way and very soon we'll be sitting around the table uh, enjoying our Christmas dinner together, probably with our friends and family, uh, those people who are closest to us. And times when we celebrate together like that, uh, we want to make sure that everyone's relationships are just at their optimal. Uh, really good relationships together. But there are some things that can go wrong. Let's talk about things from a financial perspective today. Gavin Martin from Cornerstone Wealth back with us. Hello, Gavin. Welcome back to 2020. Hey, good day, Neil. Great to be with you again. Gavin, when you're sitting around the Christmas table, uh, all sorts of things can go wrong. Uh, let's talk about things that can go wrong and perhaps things that have been in place financially that uh, could be putting strains on relationships. Uh, what do you identify as as some of the issues we might face coming up to Christmas. Yeah, Christmas can be a challenging time with families because you're bringing families together that don't always spend a lot of time together. And sometimes that causes uh, family problems and friction. And uh, one of the times or one of the issues that causes friction is, is often money. And in particular, where family members have loaned money between each other and one family member is um, expecting that money to be paid back and the, and, and the one that borrowed it is not able to or not willing to pay that money back and Christmas dinner can taste a lot different and have a bitter flavour I guess when that uh, scenario is in place. And uh, I, know, I think there's a few old sayings and things that, uh, that go around about the wisdom of families uh, uh, owing money to one another. Yes there, there is. It's often better to uh, gift money to family members if they are in need of the resources rather than loaning the money to them because there is that that biblical principle I think it's Proverbs 7 I think it was where the principle is introduced about the borrower being servant to the lender so if you're uh, got money and you've loaned it to a family member they're effectively becoming your servant because they're tied to you with this uh, debt so rather than going down that track and creating this servant relationship in a family, it's often better if the money is required that you gift that money with no strings attached and then when you're sitting around that Christmas table eating the, the turkey, you're not expecting anything from each other, there's no sort of financial arrangements binding you together and uh, you can remove one of the major stresses, those financial stresses that often occur in families. Is it the case Gavin that it doesn't matter how big the amount is, could be a big amount, could be just a little amount, but whenever there is a debt involved between family members, there's always some sort of a strain yeah, exactly. Don't get me wrong, some families are able to facilitate this really well. They've actually they've set up this scenario, it works well for them, it's they're very amicable. But if there is any risk at all in your family setting up this scenario and causing problems, then it's it's well worth staying away from. And as you say, it doesn't matter how much it is, it might be a hundred dollars, it might be a thousand dollars, it might be hundreds of thousands of dollars. It doesn't matter what the value is, but if there's a perception or a desire for the person who is has loaned the money to get that money back and it's not being paid back, that's where there's uh, problems and, uh, and I, I suggest avoid it if you can. I think if you were uh, thinking this is your family and uh, sitting around Christmas dinner might be difficult because there's uh, various uh, lending going on, is there a way to resolve that? Uh, perhaps get some, some debts and loans repaid before Christmas dinner? Is this a good sort of a goal to set? Yeah, if you at all can. It's always good to pay off your debts, whether that be family members or you know commercial arrangement with, arrangements with banks. But that might just mean that you do need to uh, change a, a family borrowing arrangement to a commercial borrowing arrangement. And so you might need to you know, mortgage the home or take some other track to pay that debt back. And uh, if that's going to mean that your relationships are going to be improved, then I think that's well worth doing. It's amazing, isn't it, how finance makes a huge difference like this? Because uh, as soon as you are the one who is the lender, uh, within the family, then you almost try to avoid the one who has graciously and almost, you could say, lovingly lent you the money in the first place. But because there's that unseen uh, written expectation, that uh, because there's that unseen expectation upon you, because you are, as you said, uh, a slave to the lender, uh, there is not an equality within the family. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that one way to resolve this issue is that you could the, the lender could pay back the money, uh, but the other side is that the debt could be forgiven as well. 
And I guess at Christmas time, that's an opportunity for that to potentially occur as well, that you say, hey, I've had the expectation that you're to pay me this money back, but I want to you know, free you from that obligation in the future. I don't expect the money back at any point in time, and you don't need to pay me any money. And that's another way around it as well, that, it can, that the debt can be actually forgiven. Wow, that's a tough one. But I can imagine there'd be real relief within families if uh, brothers and sisters were able to forgive one another debts that are outstanding and uh, start a, a clean slate before the new year. That's just, that's just uh, that's quite mind-blowing. And sometimes it actually motivates the person who lent the money to want to pay it back at some point in the future. They've been freed up. They don't have the obligation to pay the money back. But at some time in the future, often they come into resources and uh, and they just want to do it. And so it's just a, a lot more freeing structuring it in that way than it is to actually have this, you know, you need to give me that money back. Uh, it's just a real freeing uh, situation to be in. So Christmas dinner tastes different. How does that saying continue, Gavin? Christmas dinner tastes different when you owe somebody else money. So it's a good thing to settle that in the family before Christmas dinner so that you can enjoy the fullness of that family celebration without the hindrances and the challenges that come from being the slave to the lender. And of course those things are very real and anyone who is part of a family who's ever lent money within a family knows that it does create tension even when there has been the best of intentions in the first place. Well, uh, tremendous wisdom, and I think we'd be looking forward to a great Christmas dinner with family around the table and no tensions because of debt. Uh, Gavin Martin, uh, great advice today. And just to mention that people can visit your website at Cornerstone Wealth, and you can Google Cornerstone Wealth. There's also a link there on our website, the 2020 page at vision.org.au. Gavin Martin, always great talking. Thanks so much for being with us again today on 2020. Thank you, Neil. Great to be with you.